Hey everyone, welcome to another time lapse video tutorial. Today we are going to recreate a sketch that I have drawn a few days ago while I was outdoors sketching with my friends. So that sketch was of a root junction. So this is the original sketch. So I want to um, recreate this sketch for my patrons. So if you want to support me on my Patreon page, you can check out the full length tutorial. It's actually quite long, about 45 minutes split into three separate tutorials. Patreon, by the way, is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to help out the artist, to support the artist that you like. So for this particular sketch, um, you can see that I have used some pencils to mark out some areas on the sketch. Now with the original sketch, I did not use the pencils. I did not use the pencils because I felt that I could probably fit everything into the pitch. Now this is a white panorama scene. So I start by drawing from the left to the right. So I have already I already have a mental image of how much space I need. Even if I run out of space, uh, which should shouldn't happen because this is a white scene if i draw from left to the right i will be able to fit the buildings in i will be able to fit the buildings and the cars in and if i run out of space on the right side i will just uh, leave that part of the sketch out so no problems there the first thing that i drew in this sketch is the very tall lamppost on the left side I wanted to draw that in first because once you have the largest element in the scene, you will be able to fit all the other smaller elements in the scene. So that's how I usually draw. I usually draw the largest element first. So after drawing the lamppost, I can use that lamppost as a measuring unit to draw the shop houses that are behind. And now I'm drawing the shop houses. You can see that I am drawing the different sections of the shop houses first. I'm sort of dividing the shop houses into different sections. The more I divide the shop houses, the more the easier it is for me to add the details in later on, like the pillars, the windows. If you're just drawing the windows without dividing the shop houses, then it's going to be a bit tricky because you need to get the placement of the windows exactly right if not some of the windows may be placed uh, at the wrong positions but if you have divided the buildings into different sections if you divide the buildings into smaller sections it's easier to place uh, elements in the buildings so here i am dividing some of the shop houses into different floors ground floor second floor and third floor after i have divided the buildings into horizontal and vertical sections I drew the windows in so um, it's so work from the general to the specific and you will make your sketching process much easier so now I'm going to draw the cars now drawing cars is um, something that I enjoy I also like to draw people I like to draw cars and people because they can make any scene livelier so for the car I use the shop houses in the back as some sort of measurement unit. I need to make sure that the cars are drawn at the right size. So I compare the cars to the shop houses behind so that I can draw them at the right size. After you draw the first car, all the other cars, they are easier to draw because you can take the first car as a measurement unit and draw the other cars at appropriate sizes. So I'm just building the sketch bit by bit. And now I'm drawing the other traffic light on the right side. So this traffic light is quite important because it's in front of all the cars. And I'm also using this traffic light as some sort of a foreground element. When you have foreground and background element, you create a sense of depth. You can see that this traffic light is in front of the bus that is behind. And now I'm drawing some people walking and there is another pedestrian light on the right side and then there is the power box unit and then there is a huge bus on the right side so this particular bus is fantastic because uh, it blocked off a huge chunk of uh, scene behind the scene behind is actually 
some tree trunks, lots of branches, a lot of tiny little elements, but with these bars, it blocked off the it blocked off everything behind so I don't have to uh, spend so much time drawing the details and that's another reason why I like vehicles sometimes but sometimes vehicles well they can be a nuisance like for example with this particular sketch I need to choose a position where I can sit down and sketch without vehicles blocking me if I sit further to the right side, I will always have vehicles blocking me because that's where the cars will stop because that's where the traffic light is. So now I'm adding more people into the scene and uh, doing some touch up. This is almost completed. I just need to do some touch up before I add watercolor. So the colors that I'm using for this particular sketch is a bit different compared to the palette that I used the other day. I'm using Hansa Yellow Medium. I'm using a warm red. I'm not sure what red that is. Maybe it's pyro red or something. Anyway, it's a warm red. I'm using French Ultramarine. So using these three primary colors, I have mixed a neutral wash to paint the backlit area of this sketch so this sketch is backlit for the most part so i have to use a squirrel brush a large squirrel brush to paint all the areas that are in shade and you notice that some of the wash they have colors uh, blending into each other so while the wash is still wet i charged in some colors charging the color to the brush and then dab the brush onto the wet wash to let the colors splur spread out and blend into other colors. This will create a very nice transition uh, of colors, nice gradation of colors. And this is something that is sort of unique to watercolor. You just let the colors flow out and blend softly. So for the first wash, it's just a light wash. For the second wash, I have created a darker wash, mid-tones. I start by painting the trees. For the trees, I've used Hansa Yellow Medium and French Ultramarine. With French Ultramarine, you can get some textures uh, into the wash. And for the darker areas of the trees, I used more ultramarine. I basically use ultramarine in concentration to paint shadow areas of the trees. If you really need it to be even darker, you can add burnt sienna to your greens with lots of ultramarine. So at this point, I realized that the building in front of me is it's still a bit too bright. So for backlit buildings, they are really dark. So for this particular sketch, I tried to make the buildings much darker compared to my original sketch. Drawing the same scene again is actually quite fun because this time I'm using a different color palette. I also wanted to improve on my backlit scene painting. There are actually many artists who would paint the same scene over and over again just to practice the uh, colors just to understand how light works one example would be uh, Monet I think he would paint different scenes at different times of the day just to capture the light so that is actually quite a good practice it's uh, if you have time you can practice it so this sketch is almost done. I am just adding some darker areas to uh, the areas that are close to black to create that extra contrast. So this sketchbook that I'm using is the Hanamule watercolor sketchbook. I'm not sure how many GSM it is, probably 200 because while I was painting with really wet washes, the paper uh, buckled quite badly. You see those are areas where the washes are still wet. Those areas are where the paper actually uh, have valleys. So the water and the paint all flow to those areas. Those areas are very difficult to dry. All right, so this sketch is completed. I like how the colors, how they are blending from left to right. So um, this tree here, it's a Bit difficult to make out that it's a tree so I have used a white gel pen to 
adding some details to the tree also using the black uniball signal dx roller ballpoint pen to add in some black lines um, there was a viewer who asked me if I have um, forsaken the fountain pen to use disposable pens well the thing is I have a lot of disposable pens those roller ballpoint pens I want to use them up and throw them away because they are taking quite a lot of space in my drawer so it's not that I have forsaken the fountain pen it's just that I want to use up all my art supplies so that they do not take up so much space okay so here's a closer look at the sketch notice how the colors how they blend together the color that you use is actually not as important compared to the shades the tonal values the contrast if you can get the contrast right if you can get the tonal values right you can have a very beautiful sketch so uh, if you really want to paint realistic if you really want to paint exactly what you see then the choice of colors that you use is very important but if you just want to paint for fun for casual for enjoyment as a hobby um, feel free to use any colors I mean anything goes don't have to be so uh, particular about colors but the most important thing really is to get the tonal values right get the contrast right so um, this huge pass on the right side I love it blocked out so much of the scene so that I don't have to draw the trees behind and this mixture is uh, this is a mixture of French ultramarine and burnt sienna I mean for the past so this is how the new sketch compares to the original sketch so with the original sketch I felt that the contrast uh, wasn't that good the backlight scene it didn't uh, come across as a backlight scene I hope with the new sketch it looks a bit better you can see with the new sketch the colors are also a bit punchier Alright, so that's all for today's time-lapse video tutorial. Remember, if you want to check out the full-length tutorial, you can support me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If not, see you in the next video. Bye!